30p Lee. Jonathan, two cents worth Gullis. Very bluntly say that if you come to this country illegally, you can't claim asylum. Hooray for that about time too. 177 million rubles, Rishi. What are, are your steps uh, to clear the reputation of London as a city that is still laundering Russian money? These are the interesting times. Hello everyone, my name is Matt Johnson and welcome to The Interesting Times, a show that likes to take a sideways swipe at politics right here in the UK. Greg Hans is a new Conservative Party chairman. The Conservative Party will have a really good story to tell at next year's general election. And as they will all lose their seats in the next election, they'll have plenty of time to tell it. So who is Greg Hans' new right-hand handyman? A Oxley Member of Parliament for Ashfield and Eastwood, and also a uh, Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party now. It appears the Conservative Party has hit rock bottom, and don't intend to stop any time soon. Lee Anderson is a new Deputy Party Chairman. If you've not heard of Lee Anderson before, don't worry, you will. Lee rose to prominence when he suggested that people don't need food banks as they could feed themselves for 30p a meal, giving him the nickname 30p Lee. Many in her party um, uh, like to refer to him as 30p Lee. Many people across the whole of the United Kingdom uh, refer to him as he stands up for me, Lee. So not 30p Lee. How about violent Lee? Tory lies cost people's lies. Got anything to say for yourself? <laughs> Stupid Lee. We had, Brexit, we had Brexit, we had Boris, we had Corbyn three years ago. Now we've got Theresa May, it's a different ball game altogether. Liz Truss. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, Liz Truss, sorry. Cruelly. I'm still furious, I'm foaming at the mouth over this care for Cali. He's called for the return of the death penalty, amongst other things, saying that nobody commits a crime after they're dead. Can't argue with that logic. It's like no one could pass stupid legislation after being unelected. Roll on 2024. Lee Anderson then took his newfound power and use it to intimidate reporters who are exposing his lies. Based on what happened when you asked a friend to pretend to be an anti-Labour swing voter and you were caught doing it on camera, there is a concern well, the thing is, the about thing is, honesty though, is it? Well, no when concern. it comes to you. And yeah, I suppose I'm no just... Concern. So we've established, we've established that you are already dishonest in the course of the conversation because you've, you've, you've admitted you tell lies. Let's talk about that video, though, Verity. Three weeks after that video surfaced, I was voted in as the first ever Conservative MP to be elected at a general election and beat Labour by 8,000 votes. Yes, the important thing is that falling on from line about knowing somebody he canvassed on the doorstep, Lee was made MP for Ashfield and Eastwood. And that's the important bit we should all take away from this. So that's Tweedledum. But what about Tweedle Twat? Member of Parliament for Stoke on Trent North, Jonathan Grunting Gullis, who appeared on Glib at Bigots News to speak with Patrick Christie's from, I'm guessing, a prison? They spoke about leaving the European Court of Human Rights. From where I'm sitting, Jonathan, I'm not sure Rishi Sunak actually has the bottle to so either A, pull us out of it, or B, ignore it. Um, it go <clears throat> goes through our sovereign parliament if it gets passed through all our domestic courts, and then suddenly we find the ECHR is meddling in it, then guess what? It's time to leave, because the ECHR should have no jurisdiction over our laws and our borders, which we voted very distinctively in 2016 and in 2019 to take back control of. It's as simple as that, Patrick. As simple as that, Patrick? Well, Patrick Christie is pretty simple. But worth mentioning, we voted in 2016 to leave the EU which is a separate organisation from the ECHR. You can't lump everything together just because it's got Europe in the title. We aren't being expected to join an army by the Eurovision Song Contest. Although Europe, the rock band, did have a hit with the final countdown, which does seem to be government policy now. Besides, only two European countries have left the ECHR, Russia and Belarus. You know, the bad guys. It's as simple as that Jonathan Gullis. President Zelensky came to the UK to ask for fighter jets to help fight the Russian invaders. He addressed Parliament in Westminster Hall before going to meet the new king. Although, he doesn't seem that bothered by that. I will have the honour to be received by His Majesty the King. It will be a, a truly special moment. Yes, he's no Lee Anderson, that's for sure. 
Zelensky then handed a Ukrainian Air Force helmet to the Speaker Lindsay Hoyle, who raised it like he just won a spelling bee. Speaking of helmets, here's another. And he's dressed to go on manoeuvres like a big army boy. This is Sunak and Zelensky. One looks like a leader in a war-torn nation, greeting the soldiers and preparing them for battle, which reflects the country. And the other just looks like someone who can't believe he's been made prime minister, which also reflects the country. Rishi then joins Zelensky for a press conference in war-torn Dorset. And after spinning around in a helicopter, it wasn't an easy ride for him from the journalists. What are, are your steps uh, to clear the reputation of London as a city that is still laundering Russian money? Well, yeah, it's difficult to look like the saviour of Ukraine when you're still the flavour of Russia. From being chased to release the Russia report, to giving a seat in our parliamentary process to influential Russians, to accepting money from high-level Russian donors, two million donated since Johnson came to power, to having his wife as a shareholder in Infosys, which is still doing fairly lucrative business in Russia. Rishi dealt with this in the age-old method of the Tory party, by answering her. Just not with the question she asked. When it comes to protecting soldiers, I think we, we, we feel very acutely the tragedy and the hardship that your country and your country uh, men are going through. And I, you know, we've both had the privilege of meeting some of them today. I've met some of them in the past. But rest assured, we are here with you, with your people, and continue to provide you with whatever we can to ensure their safety and indeed their success. This isn't PMQs, you know. You are expected to answer the question. What happened to following the government line? You know? You know, we're just someone who wanted held. Jeremy Corbyn and to be Prime Minister. It wasn't that long ago. The leader of the Labour Party, which Michael Mara was a member and supporter of, was Jeremy Corbyn. No, was I wonder what that would have looked like under Jeremy Corbyn. Too. Liz Truss sat down with The Spectator and talked about her short tenure as Prime Minister for those fateful 44 days last autumn. So where did it all go wrong for Liz? I got into office. Thanks for cleaning that up, Liz. Must have been very difficult for you. Danny Blanchflower, the ex-Bank of England policymaker, said in response to this interview, My main conclusion from this is that it is important that Truss is never allowed to hold any sort of job that has to do with economics or thinking. Well, it looks like Danny has half his wish come true, as Truss will continue to be a Conservative MP. Liz Truss may have lived her life like a candle in the wind, but of course, there can only be one queen of our hearts. Despite it being a job that I've loved for every year that I've done it, I'm now off. My gosh, I just said it out loud. There's no going back now. No! And that's it. No time to talk about the fact that we've avoided recession. How? Well, a recession is when you have negative growth for two quarters in succession. We had negative growth in the third quarter of 2022, but in the last quarter, we actually managed to grow. There was actually a tiny little bit of growth at the end of last year. The economy went up, grew by 0.01%. That's one hundredth of 1%. Yes, happy days are here again. Sign me up for a slap-up meal with Lee Anderson. Chancellor Jeremy Flatt and White Hunt sat down for a chinwag with Channel 4's Paul McNamara to go through why the UK was doing so badly. There were international factors that people understand, the war in Ukraine, uh, the, the post-pandemic issues that we faced as a country that are the main causes of inflation going up. And also why the UK was doing so well. Well, I think what today's figures show is there is an underlying resilience in the economy, the fastest growing economy in the G7 last year. And we need to stick to our plan uh, to get inflation down. That sounds a lot like it's global factors, which are the reason why inflation was going up. But then when it comes to bringing it down, now you want to take credit for it. It sounds like you, you want your cake and eat it. Well, at least someone could afford to eat. No time to talk about Matt Hancock, the former health secretary who has gone from DOA to DOI. Dancing on ice, as he continued in his frankly macabre and grotesque attempt to become the nation's sweetheart. Well-known faces in our audience tonight. Matt Hancock is here. Hello to you. It's great to be here. Now, listen, we are celebrating dance tonight, so I'm just thinking, pitch the scene, you're at a party, there's a dance floor there. What sort of song would have to be played to get you going? <laughs> well, I don't want to anything. It's more enthusiasm than... Don't stop me. I think more apt would be Killer Queen, or another one bites the dust. Hancock, just killed thousands of the most vulnerable in society. 
grabbed his lover by the ass while he told the rest of us to socially distance. No time to talk about the UK. Paying a fine to the EU of 2.3 billion pounds as it was found guilty of failing to stop Chinese counterfeit guns of flooding the EU market through the UK. I'm shocked. I thought it would be Russian gangs flooding the UK. Former Brexit Secretary David Davis said that this was one more validation of the reasons we have left the European Union. What? To flood the UK with illegal knockoff items? Although we are already on our way with our knockoff politicians. The US has Marjorie Taylor Greene. How about Margarita Guzli Nadine? Putin or Putin it in? Zelensky or Z List Rishi? Thank you all so much for watching. And if you are enjoying these vids, then please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit all the notifications bell so you don't miss another. And I'll see you all next week. Take care.